Hey, true believers and fellow cinephiles. It's England Teen here with Top 10 Tuesday. And while every Thursday night, Rob Zilla and Dr. Venkman do kicking it, I thought, you know what? On Netflix right now, there are some awesome movies streaming. for So, so for this Top 10 Tuesday, I'm going to talk about some of the best martial art movies on Netflix right now. So without further ado, let's get this party started. Before we get started, of course, I want to point out two things that you're going to notice about this list. One, there's not 10 entries. And two, I'm not doing a countdown. Instead, I figured I'm going to break this down into categories. And the first category of martial art film I want to talk about is the tournament fighter. Yes, just like a street fighter or a Mortal Kombat game put to screen. So here we go with our first choice. Lady Blood Fight, the story of an American woman who goes to Hong Kong, she ends up getting... (sighs) Lady Blood Fight. It's the story of a woman, an American woman, who goes to Hong Kong. She gets mugged, and then she's taken in by a martial arts master. She trains for a competition known as the Kumite, and it's off to the races. This is kind of a retelling of Bloodsport, but with an estrogen shot. And it really does deliver. I mean, it's called it's called Lady Blood Fight. So you know what you're getting when you walk in the door. And you get it in spades. I do have to admit, I was a little taken back when the violence ramps up. Like, you're in this competition, and the women are really going at it. There's some decent choreographed fights here that don't look like choreographed fights. And we're going to get that uh, into that in just uh, in another movie. And then all of a sudden, there's a story. (laughs) And uh, other than just we need to beat this person up, they need a bad guy. And they have this bad guy rip the throat out of another fighter. And I'm thinking, okay, that might have been a step too far because up to that point, nothing in the competition shown that they were going there. But that's a minor nit to pick. This is a really cool film, and you should check it out if you haven't already. Next up, we're going from beauty to brutal. Sometimes you just want to watch a martial arts fight where really you got to wonder, were they beating the crap out of each other for real? Seriously, because that looked harsh. And I figure The Raid was one of the most brutal martial arts films in the last decade. So why don't we look at a film made by the same people? Now, granted, this isn't every member of the crew of The Raid, but I do love the fact that they can take a simple premise, like a TV guide description of a movie. You have the raid where it's they, the cops go up every level of a, a building to get to the main boss at the top. And in here you have a gangland enforcer who gets caught in the middle of an insurrection with his uh, crime family. That's it. Very simple. And from there you get some of the most brutal martial arts that you're going to see in a long, long time. They, now, granted, there are scenes where you could see in the background the extras waiting for the hero to get done with the, <laughs> with the one he's doing. That happens a couple of times, unfortunately, because that never happens in the other films. But the amount of gore, the amount of violence, let me tell you, just they're great characters, but don't get attached to them because not all of them are making it to the end. In the end, this is the kind of movie where someone walks into a room and everything in that room is a potential weapon and can be used as such, and most oftentimes it is. And, my gosh, I was very impressed, especially, I mean, this is the beginning scene, and right from the very beginning, it establishes itself as something that really is for all lovers of martial arts movies, but not for those who have squeamish stomachs. And so we're going to move from the brutal to the graceful. There are just some martial art actors who make it look as if it's the easiest thing in the world. They've been doing it forever and a day. It's like a dance while they're kicking your butt. And you could absolutely believe that that actor could do everything he's doing in the movie. And in this case, it can only be Donnie Yen in The Ip Man. Yeah, you can actually, I think you could get the whole series now on Netflix. So you could, I'm I'm telling you, this is an awesome uh, day of movie watching if you watch all of them uh, uh, in a row. I've done this, by the way. And it really is good. And Donnie Yen is a master of the craft. Absolutely 100%. This is the story of a martial artist, a famous martial artist, 
who in 1937, during the Japanese invasion, had to move out of his home. And in order to support his family, he begins teaching Wing Chun uh, Kung Fu to everyone so for self-defense. And uh, it's just amazing. Right out the gate, you have this guy come in. And that, now, while this is a, a telling of a true story, this guy is the, uh, the inspiration for Bruce Lee. While this is telling the telling of a true story, it's told in such a way that it's fantastical. The opening fight scenes are going to show you this. And I think the blending of the two absolutely works. Once again, this is a very graceful martial arts film. Not like uh, When the Night Comes For Us or even Lady Death Fight. And it is, I would say it's a little bit high scale also. Just a great film. I like the whole franchise though. For the next category, I was looking for something American, or at least with an American sensibility. You know, something a little bit more Western, because we're definitely spending a lot of time in the East. And then I found something that was the perfect merging of the two, East and West. In this case, instead of going to Hong Kong, China, or Japan, we're going to go to Thailand. For the movie The Skin Trade. Now you might be like, hey, what up? It's it's takes us in Thailand. You were looking for an American, uh, a, a, a Western, or I should say martial arts film. Well, here's the cast. Dolph Lundgren, Michael J. White, Ron Perlman, Peter Weller, and yes, of course, it's got Tony Jaa, who, by the way, is complete Thai badass, stands like three foot two. I love the write-up that actually says New York City cop Nick not a last name to him, just Nick, runs afoul of the Russian mob engaged in human trafficking in Thailand, of course. Uh, that is actually a bit of a, a problem. But, dude, this is B-movie goodness, seriously, from the beginning to end. It's everything you want. You actually get some kung fu fighters. Well, you know, you get some martial arts from Dolph Lundgren, and it's always nice to see that. You have Tony Ja going up against Michael J. White. And I love, I, I just like watching, uh, I, I like watching Tony Jaw do his thing. It's, it's really just a lot of fun. Uh, yes, there is gunplay. There is martial arts. That's just a whole mixture of it. And there, there's not a lot of money for special effects in Thailand. So a lot of the stuff, much like Jackie Chan, Tony Jaw is doing, man. He, that, that is him doing all of that. It is a lot of fun and brutal all at the same time. So at this point in the list, you've seen people tear each other apart. You've seen people defend others' honors. You've even seen Tony John ja knee kick Michael J. White to the face. And who doesn't want that? But occasionally you'll want to laugh. And there's no one better at comic martial arts than the legendary Jackie Chan. And of course, the legend of the Drunken Master. This is Drunken Master 2. Uh, it was called Legend Drunken Master when it was brought over to the States. I love the way they sold it in the States too. Uh, for this master, the last call <laughs> for the final brawl to take them on. He's got a tie one on. They really steered into the comedy elements of it. And so does Jackie Chan. And that's what makes this, in my opinion, maybe his best film or at least top two. It is just a lot of fun. The, you want to talk about really well choreographed fight scenes, and they have to be because he does some things here that could get a man killed, and I'm surprised he wasn't. Uh, it's, uh, it's what, what can I say? The last scene alone, I think it takes like 12, 13 minutes. It's an amazing long scene, and you just got to think, wow, that's brutal stuff. And by that, I mean just the... Uh, just them having to do it was, was amazing. It's a lot of fun. The dialogue is funny. The martial arts are quick. They're fun to watch. The movie, could, the movie's gonna keep you interested. This is one of my favorite martial art films of all time, and I cannot recommend it enough. I seriously cannot. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, uh, your life is empty, and it will be fulfilled after you've seen this. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people like me feel if it serves the story, it's awesome, and I'm talking about Wire Foo, very popular in the 2000s, in the late 90s, kind of lost it as people wanted to see some more natural martial arts, but I cannot imagine a film more beautiful than the one I am about to talk about. Yin Shan, or as it's known here, Hero, at the time was the most expensive film filmed in China. 
and it's all there on screen. You're going to see it. It's it's an amazing story. You you have uh, Jet Li, and he is, has been summoned by the king to tell how he killed these three would-be assassins. They wanted to kill the king. And King Quinn, Ken, I think is his name. I don't know how to pronounce it. But he is, is expecting that there's another story, so he tells his, his version of it. It's kind of like a Rashomon. Every scene of this movie is, is like an art project. It really is. It's just gorgeous to watch. And the choreographed fight scenes, and yes, because it's wire foo, they're very choreographed. It almost looks like a dance, but that's cool. Some, Like I said, if it serves the story, it makes it good. That's when it's good, and it is very good here. The fight in the rain with Donnie Yen and uh, Jet Li is amazing. I love the fact that they have the fight play out in their heads beforehand. Overall, if you haven't seen this movie, you definitely deserve it. Uh, it is a slow burn, so I hope you're okay with that kind of thing. Once again, if it's a good movie, it's never too long. And if it's a bad movie, it's never too short. And this movie is awesome. So for the final film I'm going to talk about, I was wondering what in, what takes all of the elements I was talking about before. It's got to have a little bit of estrogen. It's got to have a little bit of masculinity and brutality in it. It's got to have some excellent wire foo and or special effects fighting. It's got to be brutal. It's got to have a little westernized uh, thought process to it as well. All of this put together, and yes, it's got to be beautifully shot. All of this put together, and what do you get? Well, in my opinion... Kung Fu Hustle, man, it can't be anything else. It's fun, it's funny, it's brutal, it's beautifully shot. And I know a lot of you didn't know this, so I'm going to point something out and blow your mind. Your mind's going to be like, kaboom, the landlady, get this. And I'm not lying, I've got proof, is a former Bond girl. See, right there, that's her, yeah. And the man with the golden gun, she played uh, one of the schoolgirls who ends up kicking the crap out of an entire martial arts school of guys for Roger Moore while he stood around looking stupid. There you go. But in the, in the end, this is such a fun film. It really is. It's one of those movies. I, I saw it because I watched Shaolin Soccer. I like Shaolin Soccer. So I'm like, okay, it's the same guys. Let's go check this out. And right away, you are treated to such an interesting film. It starts off with these dancing gangsters with axes and top hats. And then all of a sudden you're in one of the ugliest tenements where everybody seems to be a master of some sort of martial art, except for the guy who's walking around saying that he's a master of martial arts. Now get this. I said, this is a beautiful, beautifully shot film, but there's ugly people in it and they're made to be ugly. And I think that's part of the charm. Everybody's dangerous. It's telling you that it's not just the people you think that could be martial arts masters. These are the people who come out of nowhere to kick your ass, to rise up. And that's what the movie is all about. Right up to the God Palm, man. Right up to the God Palm. Serious, this movie is not to be taken seriously. Uh, obviously, in all honesty, it's a Roadrunner cartoon put to film. And it is all the more awesome for it. If you haven't seen it, definitely check this one out. Anyway, gang, there you go. That's my list of uh, favorite Netflix martial art films. If you've been watching, what have you seen that's great? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'm going to be doing another one of these at some point in time, not just for martial arts, but there's all sorts of genres to talk about, and there's all sorts of good and bad movies to talk about as well. But you let us know what you think in the comments below. What do you think about the video? Would you like to see more videos like this is the main question. Also, help out the channel. Click like and share. It's really easy. You just hit a button. No problem with, with doing that. And it would help out the channel greatly. Uh, don't forget to click like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. If you don't mind helping out the channel financially, go on over to the Patreon or to Ko-Fi and drop a dollar in the till and helps keep making videos for you. Like, thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers and the fellow film buffs, thank you very, very much for watching. And remember, stay extreme.